also inspired by our ability to stay on course. We have, I've got two Bibles today because these two, when I read this, you know, my preparation was just also ongoing passage <coughs> that it has not even stopped. So I don't know really what we're going to talk about. But I know, I have a little bit of a summary and some organizational notes, but I don't know where the spirit is going to take us. So you guys bear with me. Today's message is inspired by a scenario that happened in our family the past two months, two to three months. But this has been ongoing for a while. And um, me and my wife, you know, we were, we were just, just resigned to the fact of, of God, we are here waiting there. Has anybody been in that position? Mm -hmm. Where you are just, you've now resigned, you've now accepted that Holy Spirit, you take control. And you lift up your hands, Papa, and say, God, you know what? I'm here now. I'm waiting for you now to do what? To ask. I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting for your testimony. Because Jehovah, you're the one that said in the book of Matthew 14, 14, that whatsoever you ask in my name, it shall be done. It shall be so. So that my name can be what? Can be glorified. So Father, we have called your name now. We have called your name. So we are challenging your word. We are hitting you back with your word that you say. Amen. When you resign in that fact, we are playing a board game. And it asks us what is the shortest book in the Bible. So this is about the time you asked me, servant of God, to bring a message. So we had just even spoke about it. I don't, if my pastor would know what really I'm going through right now, I don't think I have the spirit to stand. Because when you stand up here, you have to have the right mindset. You have to have the correct spirit. Amen. I don't want to stand here with the words of, the words of God will never even come out of my mouth. If my, if my heart is not in the right place. Yeah. So I want to, when, when I'm doing this job, Pastor, I want to be at my best. Yeah, you know, I, 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 I take pride in doing God's work. Yeah. So I'm saying, do my pastor understand the adversity that me and my family are going through for him to ask me with such an adorning task? So, we, we, we go back and forth with my wife. I did not know. Then my wife, I think she cheated, but I think maybe she got it right. She says, John 3. So he said, I said, John 3? No, 3, John? Because I said, John 3? She said, no. Third John. I said, third John? Hmm. She said, baby, that's your message. I said, wow. Now, even up to our journey to church, we're still battling about the title of this sermon. But then God gave me the title as we were doing the adoration. So today, Pastor Shepherd, our title is The Preserved Christian. The Preserved Truth. This Preserved Spirit. What happens, Pastor Jude, is as we were sitting down with my wife. Now Papa will say, you know, God, it's now in your hands. We are just waiting and watching. Sure enough, oh boy, oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy. God did his magic, Papa. Amen. Amen. God did his magic. Just believe that, son. God did his what? Magic. Let me hear you say it, Papa. He did his what, son? It was in such a way, Pastor Jude, that was unbelievable. 
They were just things, Pastor Judah, which is coming to manifest it. That it is nothing but God alone. We did these three hour chain prayers. That changed sometimes into one hour chain prayer. But you know, when the adversity is intensified and you really want to fight and you know who is in your corner, you know you have this motivation to keep, to be relentless until your answer comes through. Amen. But now the devil also understands that when the answer comes through, are you still going to be relentless? Are you still going to be spirit-filled? Are you still going to wake up at 3 a.m. in the morning? Are you still going to do it? That is the battle that we fight, Pastor John. Pastor John, mm -hmm. that is the battle that we fight. Yeah. Is to stay on course on. with our wheels turning. Mm -hmm. To stay in the walk. Amen. How do we preserve our spirit that we manage to stay in the walk? That's where I want us to take it to. So we stumbled into this book written by this guy who was around about 80 at this time. Let me introduce you to John. That way you can have a context of John 3. Uh, 3 John, I'm sorry, Pastor Jack, Pastor Shep, I keep, I keep getting it messed up. It's 3 John, you see? 3 John. Let's get 3 John. I think it's basically 1 to. Uh, 16, there about, let me see, uh, 18, 18, that's the whole, that's the whole book. So as we start going to this book, it's a book written by John. John was about 15, 16 when he was called to be an apostle. The history of John is that John was Jesus' baby cousin. Their mothers we're sisters. Salome and Mary. We're sisters. So, from 12, his daddy, Zebedee, was a strong man of valor. His mother, Salome, was a strong man of valor. Called at a young age. Pastor Shepherd, called at a young age to be a pastor. So, as, as John grows, he witnesses crucif uh, crucifixion at 18. He was a young guy. As he grows further, the message that the tomb, Jesus, the tomb is empty. They are running towards the tomb. He outruns Peter. Because at this time he was 18, Peter was about 30, 33. So he outruns, and he's the first one, and the second one to see an open tomb. This is as he grows. He faces adversity. He becomes a pastor of Ephesus Church. He faces adversity. He is then uh, exiled to Potman, uh, to Potmas. Where in the midst of all this adversity, he writes these epistles. I'm talking about John, John 1, John 2, John 3. What are all those? The Revelation, you know the books John wrote. I'm giving you this history to understand that the guy that is writing this stuff knew what he was talking about. Amen. That's why when you read the third letter, the, the, uh, the third letter, the, the, piece, the third epistle of John, he's obsessed with the word truth. I'm sure you'll find the truth more than nine to ten times in a very short passage. He is obs obsessed with preserving what he had seen and known all his life. He is preserving his calling from when he was about 15 to 16 years old. That's why in the, all the books of John, he is obsessed. I, I, Lord, 
Kenya for using this. He's obsessed by, by vilifying the word truth. Our context verse is John 14, verse 6, which Jesus himself comes and says, I am the truth Amen. and the life. No one would come and know my father except they, unless they will, they accept me. Amen. No one will be glorified by the works of my father mm -hmm. unless if my spirit mm -hmm. lives in them. Mm -hmm. John was there when Jesus said it. So John knew that Jesus was the truth. Amen. John knew the victory of the cross. Amen. So when he writes this now, he's writing into a church like ours. A church with adversity. A church with diversity. A church that is growing. These epistles are three of them. In the first epistle, he writes to the common church. God communicating to the covenant ministry. The second epistle, communicating to a mother and his children. The third epistle, which is what we're going to dissect in a few minutes, concentrating on us as individual Christians. It is my prayer that you find your fitting and to find your consistency with it. There are three Christians mentioned in this episode. The first one is the commendable guys. The second guy <coughs> is Diotrephus. And the third guy is Demetrius with the testimony. These three names evidently are really common names in this era. It's like somebody wanting to call their children Tom Brady in our era. It's like some people, how many Barack's were named when President Obama became president. Mm -hmm. It's like people, Pastor Jude, that will name their kids after you because of the magnificent work you've done in the kingdom of God. It's like people who would name children Jonathan because of the magnificent work you did in the children in the, in the kingdom of God. It's like people naming their children shepherd to magnify the work of God a man would have died. Calling your children lily, the lilies of our time. Such were these names in that era. So as we read in the first few verses, It says to the beloved guys whom I love in truth. And who is the truth? Yeshua. Yeshua. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health. Just as your soul prospers. For I rejoiced greatly when brethren came to me and testify of the truth of the who in you, of the truth that is in you, of the spirit of the Lord that is in you, Amen. of the Christ that is in you. I was rejoiced greatly when brethren testified of the Christ living in Hilda. I was delighted and joyful when I heard of the word of God being magnified. Hallelujah. When I heard the name Pat 
Patrick mentioned his in Yeshua's name. Amen. How about when I heard the name Shadrach? How about when I heard the name, oh my God, Elmiah? I was glorified when I heard of the Christ that you walk with. That is the Christian in Gaius. And the prayer was, as you walk in truth, I love that verse. As you walk in truth, this walk in truth is a step by step progression in life. Yes. Walking in truth is not does not mean walking with the truth. It's a description of a journey that is consistent. It's a description of a journey that is obedient. Walking in truth is a, descript is a description of a journey that perseveres. Passenger. It's also a description of a journey that is preserved because you are only limited to walking in the truth. Walking in the truth does not mean neither or no. Walking in the truth is not a one day thing. We do that often as Christians. That our hallelujahs are higher when adversity is in our way. As soon as that blessing comes, we are done. We are a one-way train. Even to lift up a praise song, 95% of your ears are listening to stuff that chases away the truth from you. Walking in the truth takes discipline, Pastor Jerry. But what I found out was too, Gaius made it so simple to walk in the truth. Yes. Because it was his lifestyle. Amen. Gaius did not even have to struggle. We say, oh, I need to have a, uh, a midnight prayer. I need to wake up at 3 a.m. I need to wake up at 2 a.m. Gaius made that a consistent part of his lifestyle. I'm looking at this scripture and say, why, why did we just pick up guys? So I was intrigued to know what did this guy do? That an elder is John. He called himself elder. Because when he wrote this letter, he was about 80 years old by this time. And this was like eight years before his death. Because he died in 88. So he had seen it all. He had seen what it takes to walk with Christ. Because he walked with him. Amen. Ever since he was he was his baby, he was his baby cousin. He was a close comrade in the fire. He faced persecution in his walk. And for him to turn around and command Gaius. And say, guys, I've seen the truth that you walk with. Amen. That was a big deal. Amen. That was a big deal. So walking in the truth is actually living with the spirit of Christ within you. Amen. How do we preserve this spirit? John writes this letter. Knowing very well that the challenge to preserve this spirit is a daunting task. That's why he brings out these three names. Though daunting the task is, it is possible because if Gaius is doing it, how about you, Elder Henry? If Gaius did it, 
They had more adversity at that time than we ever have right now. Not only did they have adversity from outside, they had adversity even from within. Where me and Apostle, me and Pastor Shepherd, we are even fighting about how should we preserve the word of God. But we are even better because we are here with the common best. You know, we are here to serve God as our prayers. They had more adversity because they had trying to make in a different culture. The world was, Christian, the world was becoming so interrupted. There were people, Pastor Jude, that wanted to do adoration first before the closing prayer. And they were fighting which one comes first. There were people saying, oh man, uh, we, we should not allow people that are second. There are people with rules and regulations everywhere. So they had more strife and adversity among themselves than we are facing adversity when we leave these walls. And we just don't know how to deal with the walk from here to the house. We are already cursing as soon as we get in our cars. We are already swearing. We are already Dishonoring the Sabbath, the moment we just leave this place. But Gaius, he says, I'm delighted because your walk with God, your life, every aspect of your life was guarded and preserved. He says that the good thing I like about you too, Gaius, is that you are not stingy with the word of God. You enlarged the territory. You broadened the space of God. You welcome strangers. Amen. There's another thing that I love about Gaius. There's another thing that I love about Gaius that he does. Gaius would not say, I'll pray for you, Pastor Jude. Gaius would come with a tangible hand. Gaius would preach tangible stuff. Amen. I have been in places where very few people, when I call them and say, hey man, I'm in this situation, I need you to come through. Amen. I have those people in my corner, Pastor Jude, and those people will come through regardless. And I, I know them. I know them for sure. It's just the spirit of God in me. I'm not going to mention them. But I have those people in my corner. That when I pick up this phone, it's, I'm coming through and we'll pray about it later. These are the biases of our time. Quite often, we, in our kingdom, don't even render ourselves the hospitality of Christ. We, that's why now we mess up our work with Christ because we are allowing the outside to come in. Are we a church that is each other's back? That's the part that, that are, are we a church that preserves its spirit? Because if I am to get my help from the outside, that's when now the temptation to mingle with the wrong stuff. Are we a church that preserves each other? Because I've had situations, Pastor Jude, when my lights are off and somebody's telling me, uh, let me pray for you. <laughs> I've had situations when my water is about to get turned off and somebody's telling me, uh, I will, we'll put it in our prayer request. That is the truth. If you hear it too, Pastor Jonathan. <laughs> Gaius did, would do what it would take. Even if it means I'm going to limit what I have. <clears throat> There's another phenomenal thing that Gaius was complimented for. He took care of God's servants. I 
we a church that takes care of our servants? That's the part. I don't know why God wanted me to speak about this. Are we a church that just wants to pray for our pastor or take care of our pastor? I've, I've fallen, I've fallen short on that too. Are we a church that would just say we are going to pray for you, pastor? Ah, uh, we're going to put a three-hour chain prayer for you, pastor. Uh, pastor and Mother Jenny, oh, we hear you. We are going to put a 24-hour chain prayer for you. God has changed the phenomenon of the issue. God has made a priority to preserve those that serve in the house of the Lord. Amen. Let me move fast so we can go ahead. Then there's another guy that John picks up. Diotrephes. Are we able to preserve our spirit, Pastor Jerry, with a character such as Diotrephes? Diotrephes is portrayed by John as this rich guy. He's a stubborn pastor. He's a stubborn elder. He's a stubborn apostle. He's a stubborn minister. He's a stubborn member. Diotrephes is not doing anything wrong, but he's doing what he grew up seeing. That's what Diotrephes knows. Diotrephes is advancing his tradition and his culture. But whilst Diotrephes is doing that, is he helping me preserve my spirit? Because Diotrephes is observing the laws of the temple. Diotrephes is observing the laws of his forefathers. I shall not worship with an uncircumcised Philistine. I shall not spread the word. I shall not mix and go out there and preach the word to these uncircumcised Gentiles. Gentiles. Diotrephes, according to John's word, is stifling the growth of the church. But yet vindicated by his tradition. Diotrephes could have fell short of the praise of John. But John says, I will rebuke you. That gives me the power to say that what Diotrephes was doing was not preserving the spirit of the people in his church. How do we preserve each other's spirit, Pastor Jude? That after we leave here, our spirits are edified. How do I edify your spirit, Pastor Shepherd? That you look forward to coming back and worship with me, not just next Sabbath. You look forward to picking up the phone and saying, hey, hey, let's pray. Mm -hmm. Oh, in your engineering job, Pastor, you say, Dr. Hey, I've just been thinking about you. Do you have a meaning for me to pray for you? How, how are we edifying one another's spirit? That's the reason why Diotrephes was mentioned here. It was not by the practical means of his behavior, but it is now to point out to us in this ministry, how do we edify each other? Inside these walls, outside these walls, do you have friends that pick up who is in your corner? Who is the captain of your squadron? Do you have a comrade in your corner that will pick up the phone and say, Shy man, you're going to play next week, you got your exam tomorrow? Let me pray for you, bro. Who is, who, who is the captain in your ninth month? In your tenth month? In your eleventh month? But then it goes
goes to say, as he goes further down, he says, in verse 11, I love this one here. He's still talking. He says, he says, Beloved, do not imitate what is evil, but what is good. He who does good is of God, but he who does evil has not seen God. Yes. But you see where he comes from? He says, do not imitate what is evil. When we leave this place, how preserved are we as individual Christians? Am I preserved enough to say my walk will not take me to places where my spirit will diminish? Am I preserved enough? Because imitating is when your spirit takes you where you are not supposed to be. Or where your heart Things of stuff that you're not supposed to be. That does not line up with your walk. Imitating in this mind is, is called imitation, but that's not what we created to do. That's why it becomes an imitation. Because you are created with a specific spirit, Mother man. You have a specific spirit. Once you get outside that spirit, God sees it as an imitation of something that you now. So, as this letter is written in this adversary, surrounded by this filthy world, mm. is your spirit able to stand? Is your vine able to stay hydrated or is going to wither? Mm. Both Christ says, I am the truth. Yes. If, you leave, if you let me live inside of you, you don't have to be kneeling every two minutes because God is inside of you already. Hallelujah. You are in a consistent prayer partnership. You are praising in your speech. As you encourage somebody, as you pick up the phone, you are praising them. You are doing the work of God 24-7. Are you imitating for the youth? Are you imitating behaviors that you don't know? That's why John made it specific because John, that's all he knew. All his life, up until he was 88, when he died of natural causes, he outlived all of the disciples. So, he's seen it all. He knew what it takes to walk that walk. That's why he mentioned Demetrius with the testimony. And he says, and to you, Demetrius, I've heard of the testimony. Demetrius has a good testimony from all and from the truth itself. Jesus now he has stands with the testimony on your behalf, Pastor Jesus. Amen. That God, this Gaius of Yahweh's Holy Covenant ministry, this Gaius God, this Gaius Jehovah, Amen. please take pleasure in what he does for you. Come on. Please preserve his spirit. Hallelujah. Preserve him from all adversity, please, God. Amen. May you prosper him not only in health, Amen. but prosper him in the blessings you've given him. Amen. That's what he is saying at this point. Mm. The testimony now is not coming from the truth himself. Mm -mm. You understand? Mm -hmm. When now Christ stands and gives a testimony on your behalf, yeah. mm. because your walk is with the truth. Come on. He says, Pastor Jude, as we are determined to exercise 24 7 to keep our muscles toned up, Hallelujah. are we prepared to exercise our souls 24 7 <laughs> to keep our spirit present? Hallelujah. How much work do we put into it to keep our spirits present, to keep our vines rooted to the right source of life? Because this source of life will stand consistently and relentlessly as your testimony. Faced with that destiny, Christ will stand on your behalf and say, Please, God, this is yours. Amen. This child sings for you. Amen. This child is he has a special gift for you, Jehovah. Amen. 
This child here, Jehovah, do not turn your eye upon them, Jehovah. Hallelujah. This child here, Jehovah, who testify, people who testify of your glory through them. Amen. Jehovah, this child here who tend souls for you, Jehovah. You win souls. You won't be like uh, uh, the other ones, Demetri. You won't be like Diotrephes. This one here will bring children to your kingdom. Amen. This one here will edify the spirit of your children. Hallelujah. This is Christ when he says, he says, Demetrius has a good testimony Amen. from all. Not my apostle. I will stand here to the nail and say, man, my apostle is a guy. Do I have a testimony about you? What testimony do we have about each other? Then he ends and says, I'm, I'm going to repeat this until it just sinks in all of us. And we also bear witness to you that our testimony is true because he saw it all. I had many things to write, but I do not wish to write to you with a pen. I had many things to write, but I do not wish to write to you with a pen and ink. But I hope to see you shortly, mm -hmm. and we shall speak face to face. Mm -hmm. Peace be to you. Our friends greet you. Greet the friends by name. Mm -hmm. Greet everybody by name. Mm -hmm. Because they have a testimony. Mm -hmm. And Christ is standing as their testimony. Come on. Did you come clear seeing that one more time? And then I will pray. And then I will pray that our spirit will remain preserved. I will pray that we will be the passes of our time. I will pray that the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God will be preserved inside of us. Amen. And God, and Jesus himself, will stand and testify that these are my children. Amen. The angels are here, Pastor Jude. Amen. We are living here with the victory. Amen. We are going to leave this place edified. Amen. Amen. We are going to leave this place a new in the church. Amen. That knows how to take care of each other. Amen. That knows how to take care of our spirit. Amen. That knows that we're doing this to invoke Christ himself to lead us. Amen. Just on our behalf. Amen. Amen. Amen.